What we have here is an original Apple Style Writer 2. A little bit of history. Apple's printer division, which no longer exists, sold mostly rebadged Canon products. Um, my, some of you may remember the Apple Laser Writer series, um, which was based on, I know the second version was based on the uh, Canon SX engine, which was also the basis for the HP Laser Jets. Uh, two and three. But they also produced, um, of course, a line of dot matrix printers that were manufactured by C. Ito, namely the um, Image Writer line, which we have right here. This is an Image Writer 2. The Image Writer 2 is a color capable dot matrix printer that was the favorite for businesses and um, Maybe not businesses, but at least educational uh, institutions that were using those machines uh, for their student printing usage. Um, the Apple Laser Writer was the darling of the publishing industry and business uh, Mac users. But they needed a low cost, letter quality printer for consumers. And that's where the Style Writer came in. And it was essentially a rebadged Canon bubble jet printer. Um, there's a term you don't hear much anymore. <laughs> the bubble jet printers um, used a heat-activated um, print head that was part of the cartridge itself. And here's the cartridge that came with it. This is an original Apple. Um, interestingly enough, in the agreement that Apple had with Canon, uh, as, as Canon was contracted to manufacture these, they did not specify that the cartridges had to be Apple brand cartridges. They could have easily modified this cartridge to work exclusively with Apple products and vice versa. They did not do that. So Apple lost a fortune in cartridge sales because they didn't uh, mandate that the cartridges be purchased from Apple. Very interesting. Um, however, that little blunder is what makes this printer so usable today. Because the cartridges can be either Canon or Apple cartridges, you can buy the remanufactured Canon cartridges, which are still plentiful, thanks to the reliability and the uh, extensive usage that this printer engine had. This printer engine was very common in some early I'm sorry, mid to late 90s fax machines. Anything requiring a letter quality monochromatic inkjet uh, printer engine. This was basically the, uh, the the de facto engine for most of those devices. So the, B, the, the BCO2 cartridge, which you can get anywhere now, um, will fit this printer just fine. One thing that differs the StyleWriter 2 from the StyleWriter is the, um, the print carriage assembly. Now the StyleWriter 2 uses a standard cogged belt drive. The uh, Style Writer uses a corkscrew. If you ever happen to get one, take a look at it. They're very neat little machines. The Style Writer, original Style Writer, um, it has that unusual uh, corkscrew drive uh, platen or carriage assembly, uh, but it also has a very unique um, early 90s industrial design to it. Uh, it almost matches the uh, PowerBook series from the early 90s, the PowerBook 100 line. It also resembles um, the uh, some of the blocky Snow White-ish uh, systems that Apple was producing at the time period. The Stylebrider 2 was released in '93, but discontinued in '95. It features a pull-out output tray with extender, a uh, top feed mechanism, which is generally less reliable because they're more prone to dust contamination, and a pull-out uh, paper rest. This printer also features a lever for envelope feeding, which uh, increases the um, distance between the feed rollers and the uh, separator pads. It also has a lever to adjust the print head height. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, these cartridges, um, no I didn't mention it, <laughs> these cartridges feature built-in heads which means that whenever you change a cartridge you get a new head. This is a um, 
a feature that was prominent in most of the earlier printers um, up until very recently, in fact. Uh, HP used that printer head design on almost all of their printers up until up until like 2008 or 9 and now they're switching all over to the to the I call it the Epson model. Uh, Epson was a prime uh, uh, they were a pioneer in planned obsolescence. Epson um, to reduce their cartridge manufacturing costs and, in, and decrease the lifespan of their printers but improve print quality at the same time they started using a higher quality piezoelectric uh, print head which was built into the carriage. On the earliest stylus printers, those print heads could be removed and replaced easily. Um, but when the 400 series came out, that all changed. In fact, I was a buyer of the very first, well, not the first, but I was an early adopter of the uh, stylus color 440. Uh, which was paired with the 640 and the 740. The 440 was really just a, a slightly modified 400, but I'm straying away from the topic at hand here. Um, what makes this printer so salvageable is that if the print head were no good, I could simply pop in a new cartridge. And because the cartridge is so popular, it's just a BCO2, um, I can get this running in no time. Now the printer is in pretty rough condition. It's not, well, condition-wise it's good, um, but it's very dirty. But we still don't know if it works, so I don't know if it's even worth cleaning. So why don't we go ahead and test it out? We've gone over the basic features and functionality, and uh, let's plug it in. One thing I want to mention, um, this is not a color machine. Uh, the StyleWriter 1500 was a color printer. This is not. And I don't know if I'll have to edit this video, but the uh, cartridges on the earlier color printers, um, they were a single cartridge system, meaning that you had the option of printing either a black, using only black ink, or you could print with a tricolor cartridge. So you actually had to remove the cartridge and put the color cartridge in to switch over to color. And this, the downside of using exclusively a color cartridge is that when you print it in black, it didn't really produce a black color. It just mixed three, cartridge, uh, three colors together to produce a blackish-brownish color. And uh, that's why many of the earlier lower-end consumer printers um, didn't really survive very long. Because, and they're so hard to find now because they, they really were unpopular. Um, so, very few of those remain. But this is a monochrome printer and can't print color. So we're going to test it out. We're going to hook this up to the G3 Kanka and see what it does. Unusual for many inkjet printers even today is it has a built-in 120 volt power converter. So we just plug in a standard Molex power cord and Apple cereal. And we'll put some paper. I think I have some here somewhere. Alright. Pull out the uh, paper stand. Set our paper guide. Oop, too far. On these top feeders, it's very important to get the paper in just right because a lot of times they will mispick double feed or no feed. Um, it just happens with this design. It's not a very good one. Um, so if it works, I'll probably fall off this couch because I don't think it's going to work. Now. I'm told that the 1500 driver is compatible with the ImageWriter 2. Um, I keep saying the wrong printer. I'm sorry. What I meant to say was <laughs> it is compatible with the StyleWriter 2. I'm going to open up the readme, couple of readme files here. I want something to print. I've already selected the driver, but we haven't tested this printer. It's now doing its self-check and prime, so we're going to let it do that. All right, let's print this sucker out. We're going to the Star Rider 1500. We're going to do it in uh, normal mode. Print. If this works, I will be blown away. Because I don't think it's going to work. Finder needs my attention. On the application menu, what does it want? Serial port is currently used in... Alright, so... I might restart this machine. It did not work. 
Alright, let's do that. While we're waiting for the, the Mac to start up, so let's talk about when I went shopping for my first printer. It's booting off the CD, and I'm not happy about that. I'm going to have to pull that out. But anyway, <laughs> you serious? So I bought myself my first printer. It was um, it was the Epson Stylus 440, and it was in 1999, if I recall, possibly late 98. And uh, no, it was in 99. And um, it was really the first piece of technology that I ever paid that I ever bought with my own money. Um, I had the unfortunate job of babysitting my sister for ten dollars a week, so it took me roughly fourteen weeks to save up the money to buy my first printer. Fourteen weeks. That's a lot of money for someone who makes ten dollars a week. <laughs> so, anywho, I uh, went to I believe it was CompUSA's website at the time because CompUSA was was a big big major player in uh, in IT sales, and um, I went through a couple of different printers that they had in my price range, which was approximately one hundred and fifty dollars. And in my price range, I could have chosen between the following printers. I could have chosen the NEC um, Superscript, which was a single cartridge color printer, I believe it was a color printer, which meant that, of course, as I mentioned earlier, it used a um, either a single black cartridge or a single tricolor cartridge, and I would have to swap them out um, myself to go from one to the other. Now, they had that printer, and they had, and that was $100. HP had a printer in that price bracket. It was, um, I think it was the DeskJet 600 series. One of the 600 series. It was a low-end 600 series. And uh, that particular printer was another, I believe it was a, um, a single cartridge unit. And, uh, no, that one was a single cartridge color, and the NEC was a single cartridge black and white. That's what it was, monochrome. And I had a third option. I had the Epson Stylus uh, Color 440, which used a two-cartridge system, and uh, that became the printer that I... the very first printer I ever bought with my own money. very first piece of technology that I ever bought brand new. Um... And I used that printer. It only lasted me about two years. And then it went to hell. Now you know. Okay, I think I need to get rid of the image writer because that could be tying up my printer port. And I'm going to empty the trash. Okay. Let's go back to Word. But that was, uh, that was in 99. And I was so proud of that printer. Until I used it to try to print a photograph. Oh, that that was a very, very bad experience. The first photograph I ever printed was so horrible. Um, I mean, it was just, it was so bad. <laughs> it was so bad. To print, Apple Talk has to be inactive. If it's active, it turns on, uh, it switches our port to a, um, to a modem port. We don't want that. Share this printer, keep log of usage. No, we're good. Okay. Alright, All right, let's open that file again. Alright. Let's print this baby. Like I said, I uh, I don't have very high hopes here. Ooh, I see activity. I hear activity. Remember, this printer's been sitting for 15 years with the cartridges that you are seeing installed. If it works, I will be blown away. In a base... Oh my god, you're shitting me. Oh no, you're serious. It works. Oh my god. Do you realize what this means? We're gonna print the whole thing. What the hell? Why not? I'll open up the uh, output tray. Look at that dust. This thing is working. 
on a 15-year-old cartridge. You've got to be kidding me. It may not have been a full 15 years, maybe 10, but still, that's insane. Hell. I, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Look at this. Look at this. It's crisp and sharp and clean. There is not a single missed pixel or line or anything. And it's not missed picking. It's not jamming. It's not grinding. There's, it just works. Guys, I, I, am, I am impressed. I have never seen this before. I have never seen an inkjet printer work this well after so many years of misuse, disuse, I should say. And the fact that there's stuff living on it, I mean, that just adds to the aura of, of how well... Oh, shit. Look at that. Look at that. I spoke too soon. Oh, now, here come the problems. Here come the problems. Oh, God. I got ink droplets. Uh-oh. 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 You know what that means? I think there's some dust stuck in the print head. I've got to clean that off. It probably got picked up from the, um... Which of my hoozy, what's it? From the uh, priming pump um, boot. Look at that, it's dripping ink everywhere now. Alright, well I guess I take back all the great things I said. Just kidding. Look at that, now it looks like it has measles. Alright, um... Last page. I'm gonna cancel the print job. Now we gotta pull it apart and see what the hell's going on. I don't think I can cancel the print job. Can I? Yeah, I can. Oh, shit. Pause. Cancel. Out of paper. Look at that. Alright, let's see what happened here. It's probably something really simple. Yeah. It looks like the printhead is actually clogging up from the inside. <laughs> well, you know, this just proves my point. I mean, it would take five to ten dollars to get another cartridge. That works. I'll try to clean this one. Maybe I can save it. Yeah, there's all kinds of hair on it. That's what it is. It's still salvage. Is my printer or my camera still work? I just, I just uh, threw it off the counter. I filmed an entire segment on how I'm cleaning this printer and making it look new again, which, hey, it's done. Um, we're talking a little bit about printer history and all sorts of cool stuff, um, but I, I swiped the camera right off the counter and it hit the floor. And that last file I recorded, um, of course, unfortunately, the cartridge or the the uh, it, uh, memory card ejected. And it never finished writing the file, so it was completely corrupt. So that's lost footage, unfortunately. But anyway, I'm cleaning the cartridge right now. Uh, what had happened was there was a little piece of hair stuck on it. And I'm going to gently wipe that away with rubbing alcohol, and uh, hopefully all will be good. There we go. So the print cartridge is clean. I'm going to pop it in. I've cleaned the, um, right here. This is the cartridge, the print head parking system. And what happens is, as the cartridge is slid over, you can see it actually in action. Okay, it jumps over this cartridge wiper. See it pop up right there? A little piece of flexible rubber or silicone or silicon or something like that. And what that does is it wipes off the surface of the print head. At least that's the idea. And uh, does it really work? Let's see. I'm going to try to reposition my camera. There we go. It does work. And then the cartridge. It's supposed to made up where the printhead is supposed to made up with this little rubber uh, boot. 
And that little rubber boot contains a foam membrane. And inside the printer is a little pump that is driven off of the uh, paper feed roller, or the platen, feed, the platen drive motor. And generally, on most printers, when that motor is engaged in reverse, it operates the pump. It's just a hose pump. And it sucks the ink from that particular device, and it deposits it into a foam pad. That little nugget of technology has been with every inkjet printer um, since ever. <laughs> um, except, actually, no. The earlier HP ThinkJets did not have that feature, I, if I recall. They had a very simple mechanism. And, uh, matter of fact, the original ThinkJets were really just um, stripped down dot matrix engines with, you know, as few parts as possible. They were dead simple. They really weren't that much better than dot matrix printers. Um, the resolution was similar. Image quality was very similar. Anyway, so we're going to set this to correct position. This has a, uh, a lever that raises and lowers the print head, as I think I discussed earlier. But we want to make sure that's in the right setting. We've cleaned the print head, we've cleaned the printer body, we've cleaned the sheet feeder, the exit tray, and now we're just going to try to run another print job through. Okay, now we're going to print that again. I'm going to just print two pages. I got the uh, paper turned back in there, upside, backside, down, and uh, we're going to just print like two pages, maybe three. One to three. Print. The cool thing is, this printer is really not much older than this laptop, so it's entirely possible that uh, the laptop could have been sold with a style writer. More like a 1500, but Hey, it could happen. All right, looks like we've got our print quality back. Everything looks pretty good. We've cleaned off the cartridge uh, park and wipe assembly, and uh, I think that's all we had to do, really. Let's run a couple more pages through it. The sheer smoothness and precision of this mechanism is it's just amazing and the print quality is is damn good I mean it's almost laser quality look at that hell that is laser quality I mean that's that is damn good that is damn good all right last page you can see this is what we were putting up with. We had these ink spots on all the pages. In fact, they were soaking right through. And don't worry, they're not wet or anything, so they're not transferring onto the rollers. So that's what I was kind of worried about. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Well, that concludes our video. Thanks for watching. We're going to shut this off, and it's going to self-park. And we're going to shut the laptop off, because I'm not going to use it for a little while. Shut down. Alright. Until next time.